Good evening, welcome back. Another one of Tom's Teas for you. Tonight we're gonna do a pork loin with some crackling. We're gonna do some apple and celeriac mash and a cream and mustard sauce to go with it. So this pork loin is about 500, 600 grams, something like that. Uh, just enough for two people. What you'll probably find in the supermarket is that it comes in kind of this size. I've just cut it down and I'm going to freeze the rest of it. Um, you'll need some salt and I'll show you. I've got two tablespoons full of salt in there. I'll show you what I'm going to do with that in a minute. For your celeriac and apple mash, you'll need a small celeriac, a couple of cooking apples. Ideally you want thyme, um, but I don't have any so I'm going to use rosemary. Some milk and some butter. And then for the sauce, we're going to use one onion, um, some chicken stock, a couple of different types of mustard. So I've got some whole grain and some English mustard and some double cream. And that's it. So for your pork loin, when you buy it at the supermarket, normally the skin is already scored. So you can see there's little gaps in there. If not, just get a really sharp knife and make some nice scores across the top there and then you're going to pat it dry with some kitchen roll first of all because it comes in kind of a backpack so it'll be a little bit wet still just get rid of kind of any excess moisture on there and then you want two tablespoonfuls of salt and you're going to put that all over. Now it looks like a lot of salt but we're going to rub this off before we cook it. So don't worry that if it looks like a lot of salt. But this is how you're going to get your, your crackling working. So, and all you're going to do with that is rub it into the skin. Rub it in really well. And make sure you get it into all the gaps as well and that you're rubbing it into those gaps. That's, ca that's the key bit really because if you don't get it in those gaps then you won't, it won't crackle. So once you've rubbed that in all over, you're just going to let that sit at room temperature for about half an hour, just to give that salt time to work. All right, our pork has been at room temperature for about 30 minutes now, and we're now gonna remove all of that salt that we've put on. So just again, use some kitchen roll, get rid of all that salt. Before I do anything else, I'm gonna set the oven. So you want your oven on 200 degrees, if it's a fan oven, 220 if not. Continue to get rid of all that salt. Get down in the cracks and get it out of there as well. Perfect. Then you want to pop it onto whatever you're going to cook it on. So I'm going to cook it on a rack, just so that that lets the heat get all the way around it and it won't burn the bottom. You could put it on some veg and use the veg um, for a gravy if you wanted to, but we're having our mustard and cream sauce, so I'm just going to cook it like that. And then all you need is one teaspoonful of salt. And you're just going to sprinkle that over. And that is it. And you're going to cook that in the oven. Uh, you want to cook it for 30 minutes for every 500 grams plus 30 minutes. So if you had a kilo joint, you'd do 60 minutes plus 30 minutes, so an hour and a half if it was a kilo. The first 20 minutes, you're going to do it on the hot heat, so on 200 degrees if it's a fan oven, and then after that, turn it down to 160 degrees. Um, 
and then the last 15 minutes, if your crackling's still a little bit soft, you can turn it up again for that last 15 minutes. And that's it, while, that, while our pot's cooking, we'll make our accompaniments to go with it. And then in roughly an hour or so, we should be good to eat. So we're gonna start with our apple and celery mash. All you need to do with your apples is top and tail them. Peel. Once you've peeled it, you're just gonna dice it up. So what you could do at this point, if you had an apple corer, just use an apple corer to take the core straight out. I don't have one. So I'm just gonna cut around the core. Get rid of that bit. And then just scoop out any bits in the middle. You kind of cut a triangle. Because we're dicing it, it doesn't really matter if you make a mess. Once you've peeled and cored your apple, you're just gonna dice it. So you're not looking for small dices, just kind of bite-sized chunks, really. Well, there we are. You just need to peel and dice this. There's two ways you can do this. You can either use use a veg peeler, but it takes a while and it's quite tough, or you can use a knife. So if you're gonna use a knife, just take the very top bit off. It just helps you have a bit of purchase when you get to it. And then you can just go all the way around with your knife. And then when you get to the end, you can just go back and get any bits that you've missed. So you do it on one side, take the very bottom bit off as well. going all the way around and then you see like that bit that I've missed that big bit that I've missed there then you could just go from the other side just a bit quicker than doing it with a veg peeler you probably lose a little bit more celeriac but that's not it's not the end of the world for this recipe because we only need about 500 grams anyway The celery has been peeled and then just cut it in half and then each half in half again and then you're just going to cut into chunks so you probably get nine pieces out of each slice maybe something like that okay so celery is ready to go we did manage to find some time in the end which is great news because it means that we can do um, we can flavour the celeriac with time and do our garnish as well. So celeriac is going to go into a pan. With one, well I've got 300 mils all together here. 150 mils of water, 150 mils of milk. Couple of sprigs of thyme. And that's just going to go on the heat. You don't want it too hot because the milk will boil over. We'll just bring it up to a simmer and then you want to simmer it for about 20 minutes just until it's nice and soft. Apples, we're just going to put them into a pan with some butter, unsalted butter. Okay, so melt your butter, add your apple. Make sure it's all nicely coated in the butter. You can use a spoon if you want for this bit. And then cook it on a low heat. And you do, again, it's gonna take about 20 minutes, but that and your celeriac should be ready at roughly the same time, just so they're all really nice and soft so that we can then mash them up. Sauce. You wanna finely slice your onion, which I've already done. Um, just a little drop of olive oil, or any kind of oil, really. And then just sweat your onions in the olive oil. So just cooking them without colour. So just nice and soft, uh, but not on too high a heat because we don't want them to be going brown. Onions are now nice and soft, so I'm going to add 250 mils of chicken stock into that pan. Bring that up to the boil 
and let that cook for five minutes. What we're doing here is getting all that natural sweetness from the onion. When you cook the onion, the natural sugars come out and that's what we're trying to get that sweet oniony flavor into our stock, just to add in an extra depth of flavor. Five minutes on, the, on a simmer and then I'll show you what to do next. Once your stock and onions are boiled for, or simmered for five minutes, just pop it through a sieve. You can now discard those onions because they've done their job and pop your sauce back into your pan. And to that you're going to add 100 ml of double cream. You want about 15 grams of mustard, whole grain mustard that is. So that's a nice, a nice big teaspoon. And then you just want, if you're using Dijon mustard, you could use the same amount. Again, English mustard's a lot stronger, so I'm just gonna put kind of quarter of a teaspoon of English mustard in there. Give it a good mix. And then just bring that up to a simmer on a low heat and just let that reduce. Cause it's, cause there's the cream in there, that'll, it'll reduce and go nice and thick and that's basically the sauce ready we'll just do a little bit of seasoning at the end just to check how it tastes but that's pretty much it just let it simmer 10 minutes or so on a low heat just until it thickens and then it's good to be used as our sauce so this is what i mean when i say simmering literally just bump into the surface if you do it any more than that you're in danger of either splitting your sauce or the um, or the pan boiling over but you just want to simmer it like that for a good five to ten minutes. Apples are pretty much there. You can see if I do this with a spoon, they're just softening underneath the spoon. So you could either use a potato masher at this point to make them really smooth. I'm going to pop them into a, a food processor um, and we'll just make a little apple puree to add to our celeriac when that's ready. Okay, give you apples a good whiz. <laughs> Our celeriac is now nice and soft, so I'm just going to take out those two sprigs of thyme that we put in there to start with, and then drain it off. Now that you've drained it, you're just going to mash this celeriac here, yeah? so you just want to get it nice and smooth still on the heat so it's getting rid of any excess moisture that we've got in there okay add your apple puree to your celeriac puree Give that a good mix. And that is pretty much good to go. What you could do if you were being super duper posh is now pass that through a sieve because that would make it really smooth and really, and you'd have absolutely zero lumps in there. But we're not that posh, are we, Rosa? So we'll, <laughs> we'll be all right. <laughs> so our pork is now ready. We've got some fantastic craft bit on there. I've just, literally the last 10 minutes, I just turned it up a little bit because it wasn't quite hard enough, but now you can hear. Cracking, crackling. <laughs> so what you want to do now is just let that rest just give it 10 minutes just to kind of relax a little bit um, it'll just help with the tenderness of the meat any any kind of joint that you cook whether it be beef pork whatever it is whenever it comes out of the oven just let it rest for at least 10 minutes because whenever you cook anything any big joint of meat it tenses up so you need to give it time to relax because it'll give you a more tender eat pork's had 
10 minutes to rest, so I'm just going to remove any string that's on there. Because clearly you don't want to eat string for your dinner. You could use scissors for this, rather than putting yourself in danger of cutting yourself. <laughs> Not very good idea. And then you're going to carve it. So, I, depending on how many people you're doing it for, we're in for two, so I'm just going to go in half. And then in half again. Beautiful. Okay, so the pork's ready. Now we're going to plate everything up. So at this point, I've just done it, but at this point, just check your um, celery and apple mash and your cream and mustard sauce. Just check if they need any more salt or pepper in. Um, in all likelihood they probably don't, but uh, I've not added any salt or any pepper to either of mine. Um, just check though if you like a bit more salt you can have a little bit more. And then we're ready to plate up, so we're just going to do a nice big quenelle of apple and celery out mash. Just kind of to the side of the centre of the plate. We've done some green beans as well. You can serve this with which, whichever veg that you like. Just done some green beans for a little bit of colour. Pop your pieces of pork on top of the mash and the veg so that you can see the crackling and the pork. Give your sauce a final stir because what you'll find is all the mustard grains will sink to the bottom so just make sure you give it a good final stir and then just drizzle the sauce over your pork and around the side of the plate. And then to finish off, I've just done a little bit of crispy thyme. In one of the other videos that I've done, the, um, the spice butternut squash soup, I showed you how to do crispy herbs, so have a look at that recipe if you want to see how to do crispy herbs. But I'm just going to do a little bit of garnish on top. And there you go. It's pork loin with apple and celery mash and a mustard and cream sauce.